Our next session relates to global health. We have two lectures. The first comes from Dr. Philip Lee, Associate Professor at Cornell Medical College, who will be discussing global circumcision. Who cares? Good morning, uh, Dr. Monkey, Dr. Jane. Thanks for having me here. Such great honor. Can I have a first slide? Every day, almost 6,000 people are newly affected by HIV, and about 66% of them are in Africa. For this reason, prevention should be considered the best medicine in the fight against HIV. Three large RCT studies in Africa show that male circumcision could reduce the risk of HIV infection by 60%. Additional benefits of male circumcision include reduction of urinary tract infections and STDs, such as HPV and HSV type 2, Given this compelling data, WHO and the UNAIDS recommend circumcision in 14 priority Africa countries which have no circumcision rate and high HIV incidence as part of their national HIV prevention strategies. Year 2011, WHO set an ambitious goal of 20.8 million circumcisions by year 2016 across these target countries. However, despite increased efforts, we have only achieved 50% of our original goal so far. The major obstacle for scaling up male circumcision is a shortage of well-trained surgeons and physicians in Africa. In order to overcome the challenges, implementation of safe and effective male circumcision devices is needed. Advantages of male circumcision devices are shorter surgical training and procedure time, no needs for suturing, less pain, bleeding, and complication rate, and better cosmetic outcomes. Limitations of male circumcision devices include longer own healing time, additional surgical training for all medical providers, plus multiple sites are required. Overall, male circumcision devices are important to speed up task shifting from physicians to long physician medical providers in Africa. In addition, simple male circumcision devices are critically important for scaling up voluntary male circumcision service in Africa. Currently, Xiangring is such one of two male circumcision devices with WHO pre-qualification. Xiangring was invented in China by Mr. Xiang. It's an FDA-approved device. It has been safely used for over one million men worldwide since year 2006. Xiangring consists of an inner ring, outer ring, and a silicone pad. It has a number of different sizes to meet the needs for all ages from infants to adults. Under local anesthesia, the surgical technique involves of compressing a full skin between the rings, provide sutureless hemostasis. It only takes about five minutes for experienced medical providers. Hands-on training is critical to master Xiang Ring technique. Seven days later, Xiang Ring will be either removed or fall off spontaneously. With great support from the Gates Foundation, WHO, and the NIH, we have currently completed five well-designed RCT and clinical studies in three African countries. The procedure was simple, safe, effective, and well received, with 97% um, of patient and provider satisfaction. We found no serious complications in any of our five RCT and the clinical studies in three African countries. Year 2013, WHO reviewed our Xiangring clinical data and evaluates efficacy, safety, and acceptability. WHO found the Xiang Ring is safe and effective in over 99% of patients. No serious complications are found in almost 2,000 patients. In summary, male circumcision limits the risk of HIV, and the Xiang Ring is a safe and well-accepted male circumcision device for HIV prevention. It should help accelerate task shifting from physicians to lung physician providers in Africa and eventually attract more men to seek male circumcision. We strongly believe Xiang Ren could be a game changer in scaling up male circumcision globally. Xiang Ren project is a true symbol of great international collaboration. Here, I would like to share with you a short video clip by Mr. Bill Gates during one of his clinical study trip to Africa. So what was invented is this thing. It's called the Xiang Ren. And what this does is it reduces the time that the surgeon has to be involved uh, down to a few minutes. Now you know, I'm not the only one who cares about male circumcision for HIV prevention. 
male circumcision saves life. By scaling up male circumcision globally, we may one day achieve an AIDS-free generation. As President Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. Together, we can make a huge difference for a better world. Most importantly, I would like to dedicate this talk to Dr. Derek Adavan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee.